My fellow Ambazonians, dear soldiers of the Ambazonian Revolution, first, I would like all of us to observe a minute of silence in honor of the dead devils, the patriot volunteers whose lives have been cut short and who have left us. Let us observe a minute of silence in honor of their heroism. May the souls of our fallen heroes and our departed warriors rest in perfect peace. Fellow soldiers of the revolution, more than two years ago, the Ambazonian people rose up against the occupation of our homeland. The Ambazonian people decided again that the termination of the occupation and the institution of a body of politics that will cater for their needs, protect their territory, promote their social, economic, and political prosperity will be the order of the day. Our people rose up with bare hands. They challenged the occupation of the homeland. They fought running battles on our streets. The regime, as usual, as it has done for the past 56 years, deployed its most sophisticated weapons in the land of our birth. It brought down our sacred places, mauled our citizens in close range, kidnapped hundreds of others, transported them into its own country, detained some incommunicado, 
tortured orders, subjected them to inhumane and degrading conditions, raped our women and our children in Boya. As if that was not enough, last year, hundreds of thousands of our people went to the streets on the 22nd of September to call on the international system to understand our plight and our pain, to project the Ambazonian identity, to arouse Ambazonian consciousness, to show the world that we as a people are determined to write the last chapter of our own story. Hundreds of thousands across the entire territory of Ambazonia descended on our streets with peace branches, women, children, mothers. I remember the old mom who proclaimed that Ambazonia is free. I remember the children of Kwakwa who rose up and sang the hail, 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 Ambazonia. We told the world that Ambazonia has risen to fall no more. Across the Western Hemisphere, from New York to Berlin, to Atlanta, San Francisco, and other places, London, our people rose in defiance to celebrate a lost identity, an identity reclaimed on the blood of the patriots who've left us. They showed the world how prepared we were to take over our destiny and be the masters of our own future. The response of the regime again was utmost brutality. Defenseless civilians mauled. Our boys hunted in the bushes like the game, shot at close range. They died on their bodies, sometimes were eaten by vultures. The pain, the anguish was palpable. Our people called for the right to self-defense. They call on the international system to invoke the responsibility to protect not only the territorial integrity of Ambazonia, but the dignity of the Ambazonian people, the lives of the Ambazonian people, the right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Their calls were unheeded. An international conspiracy built from 1961 was still alive. The world never cared. They forgot that 20 years ago, they said never again in Rwanda. That just a few months ago, as the Rohingyas were being murdered in Miami, the world mobilized. They forgot so soon that the International Criminal Court was set up to try all those who by intent decided to destroy humanity. They abandoned us to our fate. They left us to our destiny. Against a world oil machine that killed our people, destroyed our villages, murdered our patriots, Hundreds of thousands are scattered in the bushes in Ambazonia. Hundreds of thousands are in Nigeria in no man's land. Women are giving birth in the bushes. Children haven't gone to school for close to two years. Hopelessness has taken root. A sense of nobodiness, a sense of abandonment. Then a generation decided it was time to defend our people, to protect our territory, to save the lives of our vulnerables, to challenge the international order. The era of self-defense was born. From the beginning, we made it clear that this revolution was not going to be a walk in the park. We made it clear to our people that we are fighting a beast that was determined to maintain political control in the land of our birth so it can continue with extortion 
exploitation of our resources to build its own country, to oil the war machinery that it has used to sustain the occupation of our homeland. We devise a triad approach, knowing fully well that as part of the international system, we needed to make our case to the world. We needed to show cause for why we are fighting, why we desire to end our occupation, and how prepared we were to take governance once we have eliminated the last vestiges of black on black colonialism in the land of our birth. We mobilize our people across the globe. We mobilize the conscience of the international system. We projected the Ambazonian nationalism as it has never been projected before. We also decided that targeted diplomacy to let the world know they have to recognize the new state of Ambazonia, the 55th state of the African Union. We went to places, to institutions, to governments, and played our part. It made the German parliament, 147 parliamentarians, including the entire FDP, to ask for the German government to impose economic sanctions against Cameroon. Our Patriot volunteers mobilized here in the United States to make sure the U.S. Senate held a hearing on our case to tell the world there was genocide in Ambazonia, that there were crimes against humanity being committed on a daily basis. There was impunity and war crimes being committed against our people, that our villages were being torched, our people were being kidnapped and disappeared, and false disappearances was the order of the day. The British Parliament spoke, UNPO spoke, the United Nations spoke. We won one more battle, the battle of internationalization. But we realize targeted diplomacy will mean nothing. Internationalization will mean absolutely nothing if we do not defend the land of our birth. I took one of the most risky missions to insert into the homeland, to show up our guys, to let them know we are not just asking them to fight, to take the risk. We were prepared to risk our lives also, to put our lives on the line for the interests of our homeland. Fellow Ambazonians, less than one year into the armed resistance, our people have shown their willingness to sacrifice their lives, to sacrifice their limbs, to fight block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, to achieve immediate objectives, to make Ambazonia ungovernable. And I am sure that we all know that Ambazonia is ungovernable. I had explained Occupation is predicated on political governance. And the moment you challenge the right of the occupier to govern you within the land of your birth, you take away one of the greatest incentives of the occupation. You challenge the monopoly of the use of deadly force. You project alternative authority. And we have achieved that. Occupation is also predicated on exploitation, economic impunity. We increase the cost of the occupation. We made sure La Republic spent more money in our homeland than they could get out of our homeland. So we took away another incentive for the occupation of our homeland. Thanks to the dedication of our foot soldiers the Patriot volunteers who have been fighting battles in Kwakwa, in Munyenge, in Batibo, in Besi, in Guza, in Bafut, in Bamenda, in Oku, in Bui County, you have shown that you are the masters of this revolution, that you are willing to be focused to ensure that you end the nightmare that was imposed in our homeland some 56 years ago. It is not going to be easy. 
No revolution has been easy. But we have shown the world in less than two years that we can challenge the invincibility of one of the most brutal dictators in our continent. That we can humble them on the streets of our land. That we can push them out of certain villages, certain cities, and impose our own rules. Fellow citizens, dear soldiers of the Ambazonian Revolution, we have done these things because we believe very strongly that the only outcome that will suit Ambazonia would be total independence. And I am grateful that because of your sacrifices and your dedication, we have made huge strides in this revolution. We've got some miles to work, and we need to get our acts together. That is why a few weeks ago I traveled to Washington to sit down with other leaders so we can find ways to mitigate our differences, work together in those areas in which we agree to project authority and a sense of focus. That consultation will continue. In the last week, I know our people love to engage in controversies. Some people are more concerned with the politics of the revolution than being focused on the means that will end in a speedy manner the occupation of our country. And less than two weeks ago, I received a call from my compatriot. And less than two weeks ago, I received a message from my compatriot. My leadership has been based on openness, on transparency, making sure every Ambazonian has access to me. I spend hours on a daily basis to respond to their entreaties, to answer their questions, to clarify issues they don't understand. I spend hours talking to them on the phone to give them hope and a sense of direction. The accessibility to my desk is open to every Ambazonian. And wherever I have gone, it has been initiated by the goodwill of Ambazonians in those areas to get me to talk to them, to give them hope, to present and affirm our roadmap for independence, and to present our post-independence plans. And that is why, when I received the message from a gentleman that he has spoken to his colleagues at his job, that Ambazonians were being killed, that he had shown the pictures and videos to those colleagues, and they were appalled by the inhumanity that was being brought to bear on Ambazonians. And he told me his colleagues wanted to talk to any leader. And he made the decision that the leader who should speak to his colleagues would be me. Immediately, I informed my national security team. I presented his number to my national security team to investigate his background. I I also informed my policy team to look at all the intricacies of what was behind this call. But I informed him I will be in London for a series of meetings and that I will be prepared to spend 30 minutes with his bosses to talk about the Ambazonian plight. And if they have any support to offer, that will be welcome. So I traveled to London, not to meet this gentleman, but for two separate meetings. And I had to use that opportunity to have a discussion with them. When I arrived London and I put out my phone, the first message I received was from my daughter, asking me not to attend that meeting because my chief of staff had informed my national security team that a call had come in from the territory that I was going to sign an oil deal. Of course, since there had been no discussion about any oil deal, I wasn't 
clear about it. Immediately, I received a call from my top policy team asking me to abort the meeting. I spoke to my national security advisor, the intelligence officer of the ADF, immediately sent me a couple of photos of the gentleman. And we quickly realized he worked at the construction rather than the company he claimed to have been working for. I decided I was going to meet this gentleman. And so I got my aid and we moved to the venue. And we were surprised by a couple of guys whom we thought were Ambazonians just coming to say hello. I want to let Ambazonians understand that this revolution will not be fought and won by thinking in a micro manner. And let me be very clear to you also. When we talk about oil deals, we are thinking in the 1960s. Oil deals are not the most important contractual terms which you can use to help foster the liberation of your country. But we must make a choice whether to allow La Republic to Cameroon to deploy within our territory high-powered machine guns, helicopter gunships, to kill our boys holding den guns, or we are prepared and still allow Mr. Beer to control our resources, or we are prepared to make the difficult decisions to seek for international support through the valid mechanisms which other revolutions have used. And I want to assure you I am working extremely very hard to make sure we change the balance of power, to make sure we replace the den guns with the kind of high caliber rifles that our people can use to defend themselves. I have heard some leaders say people don't have a right to engage in some contractual agreements. That is not going to be the case. Every leader should work extremely very hard to make sure we can find means to support our soldiers on the ground. Those leaders have the responsibility to make sure when they engage in such discussions, they put the interests of Ambazonia, the sustainability of our economic system, and that they don't enter into any sort of arguments that will jeopardize the economic development of Ambazonia. What we have observed in the past few years are leaders who are able to leak out information about opportunities that can help our revolution move forward. We have observed leaders at high level leak out information because they thought the independence of Ambazonia will not be respected if it is brought by anyone else other than them. I want to let you know I am working extremely very hard to change the balance of power and I will do everything in my capacity as a leader to make sure I find the means to provide to our soldiers on the ground the weapons they need, the resources they need to defend themselves, to defend the homeland, to protect our lives, and to protect our villages. I am ready to offer to any investor any form of contract within the legal parameters of the way contracts are made to have the support to protect Ambazonia. And any leader should have that right. We have done this before. And we have done this in the most due diligent manner in which the interest of Ambazonia was protected. Soldiers of the revolution, it's so sad. It's so sad in our revolution that rather than focus on the enemy, our people, some people have made other leaders their target. Rather than focus on the occupation and how to dismantle the structures of occupation, they have made some leaders the prime target. It's so sad that a leader will not fall because of the enemy, but because of the naivety of the power drunkenness of some individuals in our revolution. I can assure you that I work hard on a daily basis 
to make sure Ambazonia has the means to make this revolution come to an end in the fastest way possible. And I will continue to work hard to make sure that happens. Nobody is going to stop me from pursuing that path to project power in Ambazonia. What happened in London is a test. My people, I am a soldier of the revolution. It was a close call, but I had a choice to put Ambazonia first or to protect my life. I decided to put Ambazonia first. I want to assure you that our revolution is well. We will continue on the ground as we move into phase four. The lockdown of Ambazonia to prevent any elections from taking place is going to happen. There will be no elections in Ambazonia. No occupying power will ever have the right or the mandate to organize within our territory any elections without the consent of our people. Only the Ambazonian people, through a legitimate government put in place by them, will be able to organize a free and fair election that will institute an Ambazonian government that will work for the interests of the Ambazonian people, that will derive its just mandate from them and will make sure it uses the resources to develop our capabilities. We must be focused on the enemy. We must be focused knowing well that our people are in jail. We must be focused knowing well that our people have died. And no one is going to threaten me. Nobody is going to frighten me. Nobody is going to stop me from prosecuting this revolution in the most due diligence of manner, in the way that respect the authority derived through our mandate as leaders of different organizations. And we will continue to have consultations where we will project authority and a sense of focus that looks at La Republic as the sole enemy of our revolution and make sure we put our focus on them to bring them down in the land of our birth. That is the only way we can, as a people, build an independent country that protects our right to free speech, to the pursuit of happiness, and to good governance. God bless you all.